founder of Aligarh Muslim University, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, just like his contemporary Madan Mohan Malviye, firmly believed in the dictum that ignorance is the mother of poverty and all evils. Hence, they envisioned grand institutions and seats of learning for all Indians. Sir Sayyid founded Aligarh Muslim University while Malvi established Banaras Hindu University. Both men were visionaries who saw the world not through religious blinders but through an expansive view of what strong and inclusive faiths can do to unite rather than divide people. Sir Sayyid was indeed one of the great architects of modern India. He was also one of those early pioneers who recognized the critical role of education in the progress and development of poor and backward Indians in general and the Muslim community in particular. He wanted Aligarh University to be a great role model on the pattern of Oxford or Cambridge universities in England. Sir Sayyid said, when a nation becomes devoid of arts and learning, it invites poverty. And when poverty comes, it brings in its wake thousands of crimes. Aligarh Muslim University ever since its foundation as Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College in 1875 has created a galaxy of alumni. Great universities or institutions are not just known for great teaching and faculty members, but also for their great alumni. In this respect, Aligarh Muslim University is certainly fortunate and can rightly take pride of its awe-inspiring list of alumni who did so remarkably well in their respective fields in the world. Just to name a few, as the list is so long and extensive, one can remember great film and theatre personalities like late Khwaja Ahmad Abbas, Ali Sardar Jafri and Habib Tanvir. Then, there are film personalities like Javed Akhtar, Nasiruddin Shah, Anubhav Sinha and Samiullah Khan. Among sportsmen, the AMU alumni includes the likes of hockey wizard Dhyan Chan, cricket maestro Lala Amarnath and also famous hockey player Zafar Iqbal. Among politicians and heads of states of government, it includes such great names as Liaqat Ali Khan, Sheikh Abdullah, Zakir Hussain and Hamid Ansari, Rafi Ahmed Kidwai, Mohsin Akidwai, Mufti Muhammad Saeed. They all were part of this august institution. Among scientists, it includes the like of famous marine biologist Padma Shri Sayyid Zahur Qasim, historian professor Irfan Habib, Padma Vibhushan professor Obaid Siddiqui, founder director of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, virologist Shahi Jamil, inventor Kazi Mubinuddin, etc. Here we are meeting with one such great alumnus of Aligarh University, Dr. Frank Islam, who has been making waves in America for a long time. An entrepreneur, philanthropist, author, civic and thought leader all rolled into one. Dr. Frank takes all these roles in this stride with unwavering commitment. Aligarh Muslim University has been molding bright young minds into men and women of substance for close to a century. And these role models mostly encapsulate the values of AMU in their ways of life. While Aligarh University laid the foundation of Frank's education, his brilliance was immediately recognized when an American professor, Wolfgang Thorn, came visiting the university. To tell Frank that his name would be etched in the history of AMU would have looked like a pipe dream at that moment. But today, all those unrealistic tales have found a birth in Dr. Frank's unflinching determination to elevate the level of education across the globe. Though Frank was born in Konra Gahani, a small village in Uttar Pradesh's Azamgarh town, he was mostly raised in Varanasi, where his family had relocated. The memories of the place still stay with him as he travels across the world. A journey from Azamgarh to Aligarh to America. So when I went to Azamgarh and talked to my father that I just got the scholarship program and I am going to the United States of America. He looked at me, he smiled and he said, you have the best opportunity in the world. My mother 
with a faint smile wiped the tears from my father's eyes. This is the father who taught me how to ride a bike in a hot summer sun in Azamgarh. This is the father that taught me how to catch a kite in brown buddy waters filled with rice paddies. When Wolf Gang Tong offered to take Frank under his mentorship, young Frank could not comprehend the reason behind it. After all, Aligarh was not short of smart and bright youngsters. Then why was it him and not anyone else? I met a professor from University of Colorado who was visiting Aligarh Muslim University who asked me to cross the Atlantic Ocean to realize the American dream and to go to school at University of Colorado. I'm enormously grateful for his kindness and generosity. I'm a beneficiary of his kindness and generosity. As a matter of fact, I was so impressed that my wife Debbie and I endowed a scholarship program on the name of Professor Wolfgang J. Throne. That was the fellow, a German immigrant came to America, became a professor who helped me. Not only the good time, but the bad time as well. Soon, Frank Islam joined Colorado University at Boulder, USA to pursue his bachelor's and then master's degree in computer science. Shortly thereafter, he moved to Toronto where he began his professional career. It was there that he met a four-year younger brilliant computer science student named Debbie Dreisman, a partner who was to change his course of life. My wife has been the best partner in my life. Uh, we share the good time, we share the bad time. She was a expression to all of us. She, we met, uh, I believe about 32 years ago, when I was just graduated from college at the University of Colorado. I was working, this is how we met. I would say that was the best decision that I made to marry Debbie. She has been a great partner, a person that you can talk about your journey, and she has been part and parcel of every step in my life in terms of my journey, in my success, in my failure. It was in 1994 that Frank began his entrepreneurial career as he bought a struggling IT company in Maryland, a state operating the national capital, with just 500 US dollars and his own self as the sole employee he started this firm. Years went by and failures shrouded the ability Frank had. But what it couldn't cast its shadow on was his tenacity. And it is only the result of Frank's determination that after 13 years, QSS was employing thousands of employees, generating an impressive turnover. Presently, the chairman and CEO of FIIG, Dr. Frank, focuses on providing growth capital to emerging companies as well as managing specialized and branded funds. In areas of education, Frank Islam serves on the boards of over 15 reputable worldwide universities, to name a few, John Hopkins University, George Mason University, the American University, the Marymount University, the American University in the Emirates, and again, the list goes on. Dr. Frank Islam is a name that draws respect in the United States not just for his professional accomplishments but also for his contribution to the society. He has been serving as a member of many international advisory councils of USA. Dr. Frank Islam's home Norton Manor in Maryland, USA is a wonderful reflection of his unique personality, a beautiful blend of Eastern and Western culture. Built over sprawling 10 acres of land, this house is a neatly arranged smorgasbord of inspired design elements taken from White House in Washington, D.C. and Rashtrapati Bhavan in New Delhi and Taj Mahal in Agra. No wonder it is called Pride of Potomac. 
Dr. Frank, who studied MSc in Mathematics at Aligarh Muslim University, still feels that even with the dust of time, the institution built by Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan remains the mecca of his life journey. That is the reason why Dr. Frank keeps visiting AMU, expressing his gratitude at various levels. I would not be the person I am today if it, I would not receive education from Aligarh Muslim University. Aligarh shaped my story and determined my destiny. Aligarh also is still in me the love of education and a passion and a commitment to create the next generations of Indians who will go out and on the world to make a difference in people's lives. Dr. Frank's love for his alma mater AMU has been so strong that he wanted to do something that would have an everlasting impact on future generations. The opportunity unfolded when on 13th July 2014 at a teleconference call between Dr. Frank Islam, Vice Chancellor Lieutenant General Zamiruddin Shah and Mr. Sayyid Ali Rizvi, a Boston-based AMU alumnus. Dr. Frank offered to invest $2 million for a management school at the university. The project was conceived during AMU's World Illumini Summit in 2008. AMU allocated three acres of land in lush green ambience of Sir Sayyid House Complex. The project got a major fillip with generous contribution by Dr. Frank Islam, who along with his wife Miss Debbie laid the foundation stone of Frank and Debbie Islam Management Complex at AMU campus. It is quite heartwarming to see the vision of AMU Vice Chancellor and engagement of people. The project has started showing results in its physical form too. Professor Parvez Talib, OSD of the project revealed that the new management complex is three times bigger than the present Department of Business Administration. Mr. Taqeer Shirvani, a representative of Dr. Frank Islam in India, has been instrumental in timely execution of this management complex. His efforts have been commendable and appreciative. The state-of-the-art complex is elegant and is at par with international standards displaying the aesthetics of modern amenities. The Frank and Debbie Islam Management Complex is a unique alumni supported venture of Aligarh Muslim University. This building project aims at providing state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to the Faculty of Management Studies and Research, a flagship institution of Aligarh Muslim University. For his extraordinary contributions to AMU, service to the community and the cause of education in general, Frank Islam was conferred a Doctor of Science Honoris Causa at the 63rd Annual Convocation of the Aligarh Muslim University on 27th February 2016. I'm deeply honored and humbled to receive this honorary degree. This degree extra special because it comes from Aligarh Muslim University. I have a strong connection and bond to Aligarh Muslim University, to its past and the future. I will treasure this for the rest of my life. Now that the physical structure is in place, Dr. Frank Islam is reaching out to our global experts to engage with the department and bring this expertise to greater good. The department will bring together bright inquisitive minds with diverse interests and nurture them to master the business concepts and put them to use for the benefit of the global community with special focus on entrepreneurship and innovation. The Frank and Debbie Department of Management aims to become one of the leading management schools of the world. This is a truly special occasion for me, the opportunity for me to be here to participate in this dedication of Frank and Dabi Islam Management Complex is one of the highlights of our lives. This is so not because the complex bear out our names, but because the completion and dedication of this building represents a beginning and not ending. It is the construction of the foundation that will stand the test of the time. This management complex is a place where dreams will begin and students who develop the requisite knowledge, skills, and abilities to recognize them. This management complex represents an opportunity creator 
and bridge to the future. EMU has been built with community participation and this contribution revives that spirit. The old building's grace reflects that character and now the faculty of management has got that sheen too, not just because of generosity of its own, but also because of the laurels he has earned for AMU. I met Dr. Frank Islam and had only to say one sentence. And I told him, Dr. Frank Islam, you are because of what Aligarh Muslim University did for you. Why don't you help create hundreds of Frank Islams? So he says, Mr. Vice Chancellor, how do we do it? I says, simple. Help us build the school for management. Frank Islam stands out as one remarkable example of someone who's gone from Aligarh and made a success of themselves, not merely in terms of, of being successful in business and industry, but being exceptionally successful in being able to communicate with the leadership of their adopted country. Uh, the United States of America. I think it was an enormously generous contribution that he's made. Um, it is uh, it's a remarkable expression of the love uh, an alumnus feels for, uh, for the alma mater. Uh, Aligarh obviously has a very unique relationship with its alumni. Uh, Dr. Frank Islam himself is a successful entrepreneur. So he wishes that entrepreneurial leaders, they emerge out of this building who are job creators and not job seekers. All our alumni uh, will be inspired by this example. There is a couplet which says that is bulandi se tujhe chahe mein dikhai na dhoon Phir bhi kuch rab to diwar ka buniyat se hai So all our alumni they owe it to the institution. Dr. Frank Islam has shown us the way and I think many Frank Islams are now in the offering and they will come up and contribute to institution. During Dr. Frank Islam's visit to the Residential Coaching Academy, a book titled Frankly Speaking was also unveiled. The book release function was attended by Vice Chancellor, retired Lieutenant General Zamiruddin Shah, Pro Vice Chancellor, Brigadier Retired Sayyid Ahmad Ali, Professor Kalimullah Ahmad, Director RCA, and other dignitaries. From the founding of Aligarh, Sir Sayyid Shah Aligarh, as a mighty tree with branches, he forecast that this college may expand in a university whose sons and daughters shall go forth throughout the length and breadth of the land to preach the gospel of free inquiry, of large-hearted tolerations, and a pure morality. As I look at you in this audience today, I reflect on all that I have learned at Aligarh Muslim University and how fortunate I was and how fortunate you are to be associated with this great institution. <laughs> this institution develops not only the mind, but also the spirit and the soul. Because Aligarh Muslim University is filled with the people who want to make a meaningful difference, who want to make the world a better place. The occasion also gave university students an opportunity to interact with Dr. Frank Islam. Dr. Frank stresses on education and terms it a powerful equalizer that uplifts people's soul and gives them dignity and respect. He serves in various boards and councils of more than 15 universities and educational trusts in the US, Middle East and other Asian countries. Dr. Frank has launched some educational project in his hometown of Azamkar. In fact, it was his love for the promotion of education that has earned him laurels in USA and brought him closer to former American President Barack Obama's team. This proved to be his entry into the world of politics too. He started working with President Obama's campaign for the National Finance Campaign, drawing him closer to Obama, building their bond of friendship. He visited India along with the US President Barack Obama. 
and met the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at Rashtrapati Bhavan. But it wasn't just Obama's campaign that was aided by Dr. Frank. He also became the campaigner and fundraiser for 2016 presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Early this year, Jamia Millia Islamia Vice Chancellor Professor Talat Ahmed conferred the Imtiazi Jamia Award on Dr. Frank Islam, the highest honor given to anybody from Jamia. Frank's theory and belief in giving back to the world continues and this is evident from his speech during his visit to Jamia Millia Islamia. Your education as a student and this great institution that I admire and appreciate so much is preparing and empowering you to earn that recognition and to make a difference in India and the world. My advice are, be a lifelong learner. Never ever give up. Be the leaders for the next generation. Do not forget your heritage and your roots. When you're successful, provide the latest opportunity for others to succeed. When they succeed, all of us succeed, India succeeds, and the world succeeds. During his visit to India, Dr. Frank Islam also visited Sharda University in Greater Noida, expressing his views on role of higher education in the 21st century, shaping studies, students, and society. The reason for this is that during the 20th century, too much of higher education operated using what I would label as institutionally centered model. In that model, much attention was paid to the interests of administrations in the faculty and the development and the buildings of a college or university, but too little attention was paid to the <coughs> needs of the students. What higher education needs to do in the 21st century is to convert to a customer-centered business model. Dr. Frank Islam also visited the Institute of Agricultural Sciences at Banaras Hindu University, BHU, and delivered the centennial lecture on lessons from and for the journey, advising students to pave their own path and make their own journey. Being in service of diversity is hard. It's not easy. It's a lot easier in this world to demonize, to vilify, to scapegoat, to bully. And so I'm here because I want to stand with the people who have chosen another path. Of those people that we have assembled here tonight, uh, none is a greater servant of all humanity of every people, every faith, every religion, every race, every ethnicity, none is a greater servant than Frank Islam. Dr. Frank Islam was conferred Interfaith Leadership Award in 2016 in the United States for his great service as citizen to diverse group of people. I accept it with all humility on behalf of all the members of the conference and those of you in this audience who are working diligently together to build bridges to break the barriers, to promote dialogue of understanding and cooperation, and a shared sense of community throughout the DC area. We must continue to fight for a fairer, for a stronger, for a better, for more equal, for a just America. God bless you all. Let the concert continue. He was also honored with UP Ratna Award, Pride of India Award, and Martin Luther King Jr. Award. I feel doubly blessed to be given this honor because of the indelible connection between Dr. King and other famous civil and human rights leaders from my homeland where I was born, India, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi told us that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. On the other hand, Dr. King advises that every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. I have heard the words of Dr. King and Mr. Gandhi, and I'm trying my best to walk in the light and to be the change.
education gave me the what I consider grounding for me to go out and become a business owner. And then there were a lot of dark and desperate days of my life. I worked seven days a week when I started my business. There were times that I said to myself that this is now what pursuing it. But what prevailed me in my journey was to realize the American dream. I can do it, someone else has done it. Why I cannot do that? It is indeed clear that Frank Islam's journey to develop the education system in India will cross many milestones in years to come. And for all we know, there might be many Frank Islams created in the process to spread the message of peace, education for all, and leadership through compassion.